Hello and howdy, my name is Alyssa Nigel, and I'm the Angular Developer Advocate for Kendo UI here at Progress. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the awesome and all-powerful grid. So, the grid is one of our most commonly used components. And in this video, we're going to dive into many of its incredible features. Here we have an example on our docs page of a grid overview. I wanted to go ahead and point out, if we view the source here, the hierarchy or the basic structure of our Kendo UI grid. So this is inside of our Angular component. And inside of the template, here you have this outer Kendo grid wrapper. And inside of that, you have a bunch of Kendo grid columns. Here on the outer element is where you're going to go ahead and bind the data. So we named the grid data in our component. We can see down here we're setting this public grid data equal to products. And if we check out our products page real quick, you'll see that it's simply an array of some awesome data. So we go back over to our component file. We'll see that each of the Kendo grid columns is also getting a field set. And that is where you are binding as you probably guessed it, the data set that you want to be represent that you want to be represented there. So if we go over to our preview here, you'll see that we have ID, name, price, in stock, etc. And that should match the fields, right? So we're passing in the product ID, the product name, the category name, unit price, etc. So we are also giving each of our Kendo grids a title, which that is what is showing up at the very top of our grid. So the first feature I'd like to dive into is resizing. This is the option to have a handle that will allow you to grab the edge of a column and resize it to be larger. It's actually a super simple feature to go ahead and enable. We're heading to our stack blitz example here. And inside of the Kendo grid tag, you're actually going to say resizable and literally set that equal to true. And now we should be able to have this little handle dragger to grab the edge. And I think we actually, if we make this, yeah, we've got a couple more over here that we can go ahead and change the size of. So yeah, resizable, super simple to do, but really, really handy. Next, let's talk about data binding directives. And in order to really show off why we want to use a data binding directive, I'm going to also show our filtering feature. So thus far inside of our Kendo grid, we've only been using property binding to the word data and setting it equal to our grid data that has all of our customers in it. Um, however, we actually have a data binding directive that you can use and it is called Kendo grid binding. So now if we let everything load in, nothing should change on our chart. We should see it exactly how it was. But where the real power comes in is when you try to manipulate the data in the chart somehow, um, whether that is filtering, sorting, grouping, there's tons of ways to do that. Um, to do that. And so let's go ahead and try filtering. So we'll say filterable is equal to true. So now it adds the filters at the top of the column. So what I wanna do is I wanna change this back to data just to demo why exactly we would want to use that Kendo grid binding. Um, so now we are doing data and filterable equals true. Have our filters up here and let's say we wanna search by Anna. Nothing's happening. This is because we're using the data property binding here instead of Kendo grid binding. So the data one is more of a static, just slap in our data. We need to look at it in this table. Um, we're not going to manipulate it. Um, whereas the Kendo grid binding is more useful for things that are going to be uh, more dynamic and have these filtering and sorting options. So now if we go and we want to sort by Anna, you see that only the words um, or the names that have ANA in it uh, show up. So 
This kendo grid binding is super powerful and you can read about it in our docs under our uh, data binding directives. We also have some customizable um, options that you can go ahead and make your own directive. Um, but for the rest of our demos, we're going to be using this kendo grid binding so that we can be doing all of these fun new features. Next, let's talk about our grouping feature that we have on the Kendo UI grid. So underneath our filterable, we're gonna go ahead and add a groupable property binding and set that equal to true. And so now at the very top of our grid, you should see something that says drag a column header and drop it here to group by that column, which is literally what you have to do. So contact name if we wanna group by that. Um, now we see that all of our contact, customer contacts are grouped by a property name. And let's try city. Now they are all grouped by city. How cool is that? Um, and you can group by multiple and I'll just start nesting it underneath that. And so as simple as setting groupable equal to true. <laughs> As a side note, if you wanted to, you could set a default for grouping. So we could go ahead and create a variable down here called group by, and then we're gonna property bind group and set it equal to, whoops, group by. And this by default is going to put city up at the top. So if there's something that's very obvious for your company or for your use case that you want up there, um, by default, you can go ahead and set it. Next, let's get into our sorting feature. So if you add sortable true to one of our grids, sortable equal to true, you now will have the option to click at the top of one of the columns and you can see now that we're sorting by the company and you can do it in reverse order as well or the city. Pretty cool. Um, however, uh, just by the default sortable equals true, you're only able to sort by one column. But we have multiple options. So instead of passing a Boolean to sortable, you could pass um, this object that you say things like allow unsort, which we're setting to true, and then mode of multiple. So single, if we change it back to single, that was just what we were doing by default. If I click on contact, company stops sorting. If I click on company, contact stops sorting. But if we go back to multiple, um, and we click on company, reverse order, and now contact, you're now sorting by both columns. So it's very, very cool. And of course, the allow um, unsort on a third toggle will toggle off. So you're not sorting by that anymore. So it's super useful. And again, super easy to use. <laughs> Yay. The next cool feature is paging and to add multiple pages to your chart. So right now this chart, uh, well, you know, it scrolls on for days and days, let's just say. And a much easier way to handle something like this that has a ton of content is for paging. And so we can say pageable equal to true. And we should right away at the bottom of our chart see paging options. And we're actually going to set a page size equal to, and we'll say ooh, eight. <laughs> and so now we have all of these. Let's actually make our chart a bit bigger. So now we have um, all of these pages that we can click through, and then we've got the arrows to go to the very end if we wanted. And of course, the lovely navigation here that says you're at 81 through 86. Um, but yes, I absolutely love how easy it is to use paging, but what's even more fun is all of the customizable features that we have on 
the paging. Now, just like with groupable, we can go into our pageable and instead of saying true, we can set it to an object where we can set multiple properties, um, way more than this in fact, but we're only gonna cover these two right now. So button count, um, that is controlling the numbered buttons down here. So we're only saying, I only wanna see three at a time or five at a time and you can see it change down here. Um, we also are passing page sizes. And so we had originally set eight for our page size for how many things we want to show on a page at a time. Um, I changed this to five, but our page sizes actually gives the user the option to change that themselves. So if they didn't want five, but 10 or even 20, um, just change it at will right inside the chart. So well, that is all the time we have right now for covering the grid, but I'd really encourage you to dive into our docs. We have so many more options and the grid again is one of our most popular components. So I really hope you've enjoyed yourself and happy coding everyone. Mm -hmm.